Thank colleagues, um, we'll resume business uh, and the next item is a member's business debate on motion 13271 in the name of Rachel Hamilton on Arthritis Research UK Survey on Access to Work and this debate will be taken without any questions being put. Anybody who wishes to speak in the debate, I would urge you to press your request to speak button now and I call on Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Firstly, I want to thank members for supporting my motion, which highlights the results of the findings of the survey conducted by Versus Arthritis between May and June 2018. I'll be using this debate to discuss the findings of the report, which is called Working It Out, Awareness of Access to Work and Employer Support. And I'd also like to thank my colleagues, who I know are hungry and want to get to lunch. Many of you will be surprised to learn that arthritis and other musculoskeletal conditions affect 1.5 million people across Scotland. It's a significant figure. It's almost a third of people in Scotland. The stiffness, pain and fatigue that come from these conditions affect so many aspects of daily life that can be taken for granted and can even make the most smallest tasks very difficult. I know this because I have rheumatoid arthritis and since my diagnosis in 2007, following the birth of my third child, I've endured the unpredictability of this chronic disease. Nearly a third of all Scottish citizens, as I've said, have a similar story. My own home in the Borders is a perfect example of the scope of the problem. Almost a thousand people live with rheumatoid arthritis. Of those aged 45 and over, there are almost an estimated 6,300 people with osteoarthritis of the hip, and 10,400 people with osteoarthritis of the knee. These numbers are staggering for a rural area with a small population, but sadly, they are not all that different from Scotland as a whole. This is perhaps not an aspect of life that, there is not perhaps an aspect of life that is more affected by a musculoskeletal condition than the ability to work. Staying in work is vital to supporting all aspects of a person's health. And this is made much more difficult for those with muscular skeletal conditions. I completely understand the challenges that people with the same condition face. Before my rheumatoid arthritis was under control, every single joint of my body was so swollen that I wasn't able to work, to drive, or even write with a pen. Presiding officer, research conducted by Versus Arthritis found that over 80% of those with arthritis had experienced pain, fatigue and stiffness while at work. In many cases, these symptoms resulted in needing to work fewer hours, retire early or even give up work entirely. Which is exactly what I had to do. I had to give up my work. And I'll explain a little, little bit about that later. So those needing to stop working has reached such a level that there is now 20% employment gap between those at work with arthritis and those who have no health condition. The economic impact of this for rheumatoid arthritis alone is estimated to be over 655 million. I know firsthand how important it is uh, to be in work, to have that sense of well-being to be financially independent and to be able to be proud of contributing to the economy. In my own situation, I wasn't able to speak about my condition, but by speaking up today, I hope to raise awareness for others. In the 2017 Conservative Party Manifesto, we pledged to have one million more disabled people in work by the end of the decade and plan to achieve this through help from the Access to Work Scheme. I do believe that the Scottish Government must join with the UK Government to do more to as assist all those living with these types of conditions. The Access to Work Scheme provides vital funding and support for those with a range of disabilities, enabling them to be in work. It is a fabulous scheme to provide help, but there's a problem. Not many people know it exists. The Versus Arthritis Survey found that 60% of respondents had never heard of access to work scheme and of the remaining 40% only 10% had heard of the scheme but did not know what it does. The UK government is sponsoring many promotional events for access to work throughout the UK but we can do more to ensure that the awareness for this scheme is greatly increased which is one of the calls of the report. It's imperative that more is done to promote this scheme to both people with arthritis and to employers to ensure that the proper support um, required to remain in and join the workforce is given in the first place. 
And to help do this, I'm pleased that the UK Government um, Department for Work and Pensions and their colleagues from Access to Work are developing closer ties with Job Centre Plus work coaches. And this will ensure that both employers and prospective employees with arthritis are fully aware of the scope of the programme. The expectations for employers should also be more clear. As it stands in the Equality Act of 2010, employers are required to make reasonable adjustments to assist with those disabilities in the workplace. It's not clear, however, as to what qualifies as reasonable adjustment. Adding to this definition is a very simple solution that government can put in place to create a more streamlined support system for both employers and employees and pave the path to improve many people's experience at work. And I will continue to campaign to the Minister for Equalities, Penny Mordaunt, to give clarity over this definition. Furthermore, the Scottish Government must do all it can to assist employers in hiring those with musculoskeletal conditions. The Scottish Government and public agencies need to be leaders in promoting the employment of people with arthritis. It is astounding that arthritis and back pain are a leading cause of sickness absence, in, in, including among the NHS workforce. And therefore, forthcoming strategies on increasing disability employment in Scotland's public sector need to acknowledge those conditions, including arthritis, and the support required for people with a condition to join and remain and contribute to our workforce. And I know that the Minister recently met with Versus Arthritis, and I hope that he can commit to taking the points that I have made today and the points within the review. Both of Scotland's governments can and must do better for those with musculoskeletal conditions. Better promotion of access to work, a definition of reasonable adjustments, training for Job Centre Plus staff, and further reviews from the Scottish Government are not unreasonable asks, but are changes that could make an extraordinary impact on somebody's life. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call Rona Mackay to be followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank Rachel Hamilton uh, for bringing this important debate to the Chamber and for her uh, moving and, and personal speech. I'm happy to be taking part in the debate which is helping to raise awareness for the Access to Work scheme. The scheme has the potential to benefit a huge number of the 1.5 million people estimated to be living with a musculoskeletal condition. Arthritis and related conditions are the most common conditions affecting the UK workforce, with around 10 million sufferers resulting in approximately 30.8 million working days lost each year in the UK. Having arthritis or related conditions can make everyday tasks that we take for granted near impossible. Even the commute to work, never mind the actual work, can make employment uh, impossible for some people with these conditions. The access to work scheme can be hugely beneficial to those suffering from the condition who are able to work and helping them to start work, stay in work or move into self-employment in terms of support workers, additional travel to work costs and communication support to interviews. Also, it's critical to note that companies with fewer than 50 employees, that for companies with fewer than 50 employees, the access to work scheme will usually cover all costs of any support required by employees, meaning there's no detriment to companies when hiring an employee who's part of that scheme. The charity Versus Arthritis, who are doing an amazing job of raising awareness of the condition and putting it front and centre of the public health agenda, have teams in Scotland, England and Wales to ensure people with arthritis have access to the support they need. But a huge hurdle this scheme is facing is that too many individuals are unaware of the support they could be entitled to. People with arthritis throughout Scotland should be supported to work as long as they can and I can and want to be in employment. But for this to be a reality, there has to be a far bigger push of this information to the people who need it most. And employers must get on board too, as, as Rachel Hamilton has stated. National statistics have shown that whilst the number of individuals being diag diagnosed with arthritis each year has risen, the number of people with arthritis being assessed for support has fallen every year since 2013-14. So, presiding officer, while it's great to know the support is available for those living with arthritis and other related conditions, there's still so much more that could be done to promote this scheme so that those who really require this support are the ones who are accessing it. And that's why the, the work that Versus Arthritis is doing is so important. They're also doing valuable work in studying the link between those who've suffered adverse childhood experiences, uh, which uh, they go on to develop arthritis. Um, the charity is also challenging the stereotype that arthritis is an old person's condition. 
Sadly, an estimated 15,000 children throughout the UK are battling with the disease, which creates huge challenges for children trying to lead a normal life. But there's thankfully a growing network of support for young people, which includes peer mentoring, uh, and that's, that, that's now available to help them cope with such a difficult journey. Presiding officer, we've moved into new territory when it comes to arthritis. It's no longer acceptable to dismiss it as an inevitable part of aging. Arthritis affects people of all ages. Lifestyle changes, early diagnosis and new treatments all herald a brighter future for those living with the condition and to give them hope. Thank you. Thank you. I call Brian Whittle to be followed by Elaine Smith. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I also congratulate my colleague Ra Rachel Hamilton for securing time in the Chamber to debate uh, uh, further raise awareness of arthritis and also further recognise the work uh, that versus arthritis continue to do in this field. It's a particularly welcome uh, debate for me, uh, Presiding Officer, because I happen to convene uh, the MSK and Arthritis CPG. And in that time uh, uh, that I've been in that position, I've had my thoughts on the issues shaped and developed by a very passionate uh, group of people. It's always a very well attended cross-party group. And I have to say that speakers are cross-examined in a fashion that I have not seen in any other CPG that I happen to attend. Uh, I, I took on the convenership of the cross-party group with the thought of, of, of promoting that uh, self-help on the impact of nutrition and physical activity on many conditions and the, and the steps that could be taken as part of that uh, prevention agenda. Let me tell you, presenting officer, when the very first CPG I convened, I was properly educated. Uh, prevention perhaps is a very much a, a thrust of the work done in the CPG, but it's also very obvious that, that the medical facilities uh, and treatments available to those suffering these conditions uh, is very patchy across Scotland. And it does, and, and that in itself uh, forms a major part of the presenting agenda, which I'll come on to later. In terms of uh, access to work, I, I've been asked a couple of times to uh, present at, uh, at small conferences in Ayrshire, uh, uh, where we, we brought a, a whole load of employers together uh, and tried to help them to understand the, the help that's available uh, to them uh, with, with the, uh, the employees who potentially have uh, conditions like this. Um, Jeremy Balfour, um, I, I brought him down to, to join me. And it's very, very obvious that, uh, as has been alluded to already, that there is a, there is a, a, a gap in the knowledge uh, with many, many employers about the help that's available to them, as, as well as the help that's available to those who suffer. And I think that's, that work must continue to go because it, being unable to work, having that chronic pain, uh, which with chronic pain, uh, CPG also uh, uh, come in come in with our, our, our cross party group as well. As I as I raised uh, first minister's questions uh, a couple of weeks ago, there is that that isolation, that impact on mental health that perhaps uh, is missed now and again. And given that almost half of all absentees from work are related to uh, musculoskeletal and arthritis. It is a very serious issue, as uh, Rachel Hamilton alluded to, one and a half million people in Scotland being affected by this. I have to say, I recently uh, I hosted uh, the recent osteoporosis reception, uh, looking at the cost of fragility fractures. Uh, it was really, it really brought home to me, uh, presenting officer, there are treatments and procedures within the fracture, fracture liaison service which have a proven positive impact, not only in the NHS budget, but more importantly, uh, that factor of improving the quality of life. And I, 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 if we look at the statistics that, that state that uh, over the age of 50, one in two women will have a fracture and one in five men uh, will have a fracture. And almost half of those who uh, have a, a, a hip fracture have already had a fracture before that. There are 45,000 fragility fractures in Scotland each year, more than uh, three times the number of, of strokes, uh, and that is expected to increase by 50% over the next 17 years due to the fact that we have an aging population. So it is something we have to be really cognizant of. I think the, uh, the, the fragility fracture costs uh, to the NHS in Scotland are estimated at around £36 million each year, with an estimated £33 million in further uh, social care. Um, I, 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 and and if, if we had universal fracture liaison services across Scotland, we could prevent something in the region of uh, 4,500 fragility fractures with the overall combined health and social economy 
uh, allowing uh, the NHS to say, say, save some £7.4 million pounds per year. So it, ha it has, uh, from all, for all aspects, uh, it, it, this is really it's, it's incredibly important. I think uh, NOS are working in partnership with the NHS to establish uh, FLS across Scotland in line with uh, the published clinical standards, which have yet to be formally adopted uh, within Scotland. So I think that's something, I know the Minister was there at the osteoporosis uh, uh, um, uh, meeting I was at, and he, he took cognizance of that. So hopefully the, the Scottish Government uh, will take that particular issue forward, and I'll leave it there, uh, Presenting Officer. Thank you very much. And I call Elaine Smith to be followed by the Minister. Elaine Smith. Thank you, President Officer, and I too thank Rachel Hamilton for bringing this debate to the Chamber to raise awareness of arthritis and the Access to Work scheme, and also for speaking about her personal circumstances, which is often not an easy thing to do. It's important to note the extent of the funding and research that Versus Arthritis provides in Scotland, with a recent report mentioning that they've invested almost £17 million. The research focuses on, amongst other things, health interventions that will allow people with the condition in the future to have a better knowledge of how to manage the pain that it causes, but it also notes that arthritis is a major component of multimorbidity. And as we know, multimorbidity disproportionately affects those from poorer backgrounds, with people in the most deprived areas of Scotland developing multimorbidity 10 to 15 years earlier compared to those in the least deprived. This concerning statistic, I think, proves that arthritis is a major contributor to the difficulties that some people in poverty face with their health, and also um, arthritis when combined, as it frequently is, with another chronic illness such as thyroid disorder, further reduces the chances of getting into work and out of poverty. I'm sure members will join with me in welcoming the new research commissioned by Versus Arthritis, now started at Glasgow University, which will be looking in more detail at the life impact of living with arthritis, along with other chronic conditions. Over 700,000 people in Scotland suffer from a form of arthritis, and that's a figure that's expected to double by 2030. Arthritis charities have in the past made various recommendations to help reduce the increasing numbers of people expected to suffer from arthritis. And these include ensuring that there are local services across the country to assist people. One such helpful service in my own area is Club 365 in North Lanarkshire, where young people who are living in poverty are supported and encouraged to have a free healthy meal during school holidays and to participate in activities. And this kind of initiative helps young people who live in deprived areas to access food in the first place, but also to make improvements to a poor diet and to take part in leisure programmes free of charge. And as well as tackling the increasing uh, poverty blight in our community resulting in hunger, we know, um, sorry, resulting in hunger, poor diet and lack of physical exercise. These programmes also help reduce the chances then of suffering chronic illness such as arthritis or other muscular skeletal conditions or multiple morbidity in the future. President officer, last night in Parliament I attended the harrowing play Food Bank as it is, telling true stories from food banks around the country and I really wish that this was compulsory viewing for every MSP because it's simply shocking that in a rich country like Scotland parents Go, are going hungry to feed their children and that men, women and children are contemplating suicide because of poverty and that poverty is often caused by insecure, low paid employment or in fact no job at all. And what chance have the one in four children living in poverty got of a healthy diet and lifestyle to reduce conditions like arthritis and multimorbidity when they're actually going hungry right now? At the event last night, the Menu for Change organisation highlighted a number of people who should not even have been at the food bank. And that's people who had not received the benefits and supports to which they were entitled, or people who are losing jobs due to disability. The latest versus arthritis report on the take-up of the Access to Work programme shows a low level of awareness amongst those who are living with arthritis. And that really does have to be tackled as a matter of urgency. Because not only are we losing talented people from our workforce, but many of them are ending up at food banks, which should only ever be a last resort, but sadly are increasingly being used by those who should not be living in such extreme poverty, including those entitled to appropriate support, such as access to work, to, to access and remain in employment. Presiding officer, the work that Versus Arthritis does is commendable and is rightly recognised, and I'm glad we're doing so in this debate today, but their recommendations also need to be listened to and acted upon. And can I just finish by saying that in addition to that, particularly given the role played by poverty in multimorbidity, we should all be ashamed that we're living in a country which receives such a damning report 
from the UN Rapporteur on Poverty last week. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call on the Minister, Jamie Hepburn, to respond to and to conclude our debate. Thank you very much, President Officer. Can I join with others in thanking Rachel Hamilton for bringing forward today's debate and uh, all members for the contribution, but I, I hope those who've uh, contributed won't mind me in particular uh, highlighting Rachel Hamilton's uh, contribution because she spoke so openly about her own experience and as Elaine Smith said, that isn't always an easy thing to do. So I, I want to uh, sincerely thank her for having done so. Can I also thank uh, Versus Arthritis for uh, the activity and research that they uh, engage in. They are a, a very valuable uh, organisation. They are a very, very valuable a partner in, uh, to us as a, an administration, and I want to place that on record uh, as well. It, the context of this debate is, of course, about access uh, to work, how it can be of great assistance to enable people to enter and stay in work. Let me say at the outset, I think that access to work is a great initiative, and uh, members will be aware. I don't often get to say that about DWP uh, initiatives, but the sad thing about it is that too many people still don't know that this support is available. It's often described as the DWP's best kept secret, and that's something that we uh, need uh, to change. And I'll, I'll come on to that uh, in a moment's uh, time. But uh, just to, to, to start off, Ron Mackay alluded to uh, this issue. People do still tend to think of arthritis as a condition that affects older people. But we know, and as we've discussed, and as we've seen very powerfully demonstrated through the advertisement campaign underway, this uh, painful and life-changing condition is indiscriminate in terms of uh, those it can impact and strike absolutely anyone at any, t uh, any age and at any uh, time. And it is uh, obviously a significant challenge for us as a nation. Some nearly 28% of disabled people cite musculoskeletal problems as their main disability. Their main disability will be many others who will also have a diagnosis of the condition but don't classify it as their uh, main disability and many of those people will have arthritis across the uk as a whole there are 10 million people with arthritis one in six the population affects all aspects of life uh, personal independence family life relationships and in the context of the debate today employment looking at employment 38 percent of those surveyed uh, by versus arthritis said they had given up work altogether well, the same proportion have had to reduce their hours. So that clearly has a huge personal impact for those with arthritis, with many of the negative consequences that Elaine Smith was quite correct to identify, but it is also a significant cost collectively to our economy through the loss of talented and skilled people from the workforce. This is something that I do think we need to discuss uh, uh, and respond to, and in that regard, uh, Brian Whittle talked about uh, the cross-party group on musculoskeletal conditions and arthritis. I was going to offer to attend, but then he said uh, he's never seen speakers cross-examined in uh, such a, a fashion. But um, let, me, let me say I am, uh, 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 Mr Whittle says I'm very welcome. If he wanted to invite me to discuss this matter, I'd, I'd be happy to, to attend. Rachel Hamilton uh, mentioned, um, the word obviously got out, uh, met versus arthritis. Not only that, I meet them last week also Joe Fitzpatrick, as the Minister for Public Health, Sport and Wellbeing, he met them as well uh, to discuss uh, different aspects of their work. I was very pleased to meet Maureen McAllister, Angela Donaldson-Bruce and Anne Lowe uh, with a focus on uh, employment. Uh, we discussed uh, the survey from a, a, both a professional and personal point of view. Anne Lowe, who's a volunteer, told me about her experience of being supported by versus arthritis and the issues she has experienced managing both her condition and trying to remain in uh, employment. And it was very clear uh, uh, of, in, through that conversation the uh, fundamental challenges that she has faced, which will be uh, symptomatic of, of many other uh, people uh, out there uh, as well. We discussed and agreed the need for greater promotion of access to work. I want to turn back to that particular uh, point. Uh, this is uh, an action that we can certainly uh, take forward. We don't have direct responsibility for access to work. I will, of course, mention passing. I think we should, but I'm not going to focus on that too much uh, today. But we can certainly uh, take forward a campaign and an initiative to help the DWP better promote uh, the availability of access uh, to work. 
because we know that um, the, the most recent statistics uh, show that uh, in 2017 to 2018, uh, 33,860 people received access to work payments, totalling some £110.8 million. Pounds. Now, that sounds very impressive. That's a UK-wide figure. We don't have the details of the level of spend in Scotland, but we do know that historically, uh, the spend here is around 6 to 7 per cent of the overall level of expenditure. That, I don't need to labour the point. That clearly it shows that we're not getting a proportionate level of expenditure, especially when actually you factor in, not only is it not proportionate to our overall population, we actually know the uh, prevalence of disability generally, and this condition is greater in uh, Scotland than across the UK uh, as a, a whole. Versus the writers set out very clearly to me how they believe the scheme could be improved. Um, we will continue to lobby the UK government and tandem with them for changes to try and improve uh, the the, the scheme. As I say, uh, if we had direct control, I think we could uh, tie it up with other initiatives and improve it further. But I'm not, as I say, going to press that point because even without the direct res policy responsibility, we will act in a fairer Scotland for disabled people, which we published in December 2016. We committed to promote access to work. Since that time, we've had awareness sessions with uh, staff from across a range of Scottish Government areas of responsibility, as well as members of the Third Sector Employability Network. In, our first start, in First Start Scotland, their employment programme, it's a requirement of our service providers ensure that disabled people participating in the service know about access to work. And at our Disability Congress in April, we asked DWP to undertake two sessions to talk about access to work, which they agreed to do and which were very well attended. So we have been promoting access to work and we will continue to do so. And of course, I'll give way to Elaine Smith. Elaine Smith. Yeah. I thank the Minister for giving way. On, in terms of prevention, which was mentioned by Rachel Hamilton in her speech, would, would the Minister also uh, perhaps talk about the importance of um, initiatives like the schemes that help with poor diet and physical, increasing physical exercise among young people so that it can help prevent these conditions in the future? Minister. Well, yeah, uh, of course, I, I accept that um, that's of fundamental importance and it's of fundamental importance for the whole range of reasons that we set out. Uh, ultimately, it's about a quality of life issue, but also being in employment is part of a quality of life issue as well. And yes, we need to support people to be as healthy, fit and healthy as possible so that they have the best chance possible not acquiring the condition in the first instance. But where they do, I believe it's incumbent on us to do all we can to support them. We will be publishing our disability employment plan in the coming uh, weeks. That will set out our initial steps towards our ambition to at least half the disability employment gap. I recognise that's going to require uh, different measures, different forms of intervention for different types of disability. But let me assure Rachel Hamilton and all members that we will, and we do take this issue seriously, we will continue to work with versus arthritis and everyone interested in this matter to ensure that we can do everything we can to support people with arthritis into the labour market and if they're already in work to remain in employment. Thank you very much, Minister and members. That concludes our debate and I suspend this meeting until two o'clock.